Hello, Moby Dictum. Super, super happy to be here and excited. Finally made it to Istanbul after three years, wanted to come here. Um, today we're going to talk about how to launch your game without FOMO. So no FOMO and, and basically this is our topic for today. Before we, get, uh, before we get going, actually, this is the right picture. Okay, so before we get going, a little bit of an introduction about myself. My name is Danielle. I'm the VP Gaming at Supersonic. Iron Source Publishing Solution, uh, and my team and I take um, studios, very talented studios, from ideation to testing, into prototyping, developing the game until it's ready and baked for the chart, so basically publishing and product. A little bit of a numbers about our team, so in our two and a half years of existence, we were able to publish over 75 games, successful games, you probably know most of them, games like Color Match, My Mini Mart, 911, Going Balls, and many, many more. You can see the amazing growth from 2020 to 2021 to 2022, when we launched already 31 games in 2022, which is pretty amazing. Kudos to the team. Uh, we have 125 talented people in our team. Most of them are based in Tel Aviv, which is our headquarters, and the rest are spread around our seven global offices. We really, really believe in tech, so we're really heavy on tech. Um, believe in prior productizing every step of the publishing funnel, that things that I will show you today. Um, we believe in accuracy and full potential, squeezing the lemon out of every game we're working on and making sure it reaches the top. So what's FOMO in general? Why are we talking about FOMO and how does it relate to game development at all? So I'll give you an example of scenario. Probably most of you guys in the room already felt it or will feel it. So you worked on a game or a prototype for a few good months. You already made the team believe in the concept, even made a little uh, CPI bet on the side. We all felt that. Uh, we all did that before. But the game is not quite there, so the KPIs are not there. You don't have the right play time. You don't have the right uh, retention, but you still want to get going. So that's a little bit of a FOMO. Should I pull a Hail Mary? Should I keep working on a game further and further? Is the next iteration, will it get me where I want? Not for sure. So how do you make sure you work on a game that you know that's going to work? And how do you make sure you don't waste any time? Because FOMO is actually can hurt you. Yeah, it can bring to some costs. You can lose a lot of time. And you might bring your team motivation down. That's something that you don't want to do, obviously. Um, and actually, everything that we're going to talk about today is things that we learned in our process in the last two and a half years. So when we started Supersonic, we thought, that game development is actually 90% art and 10% science. Uh, but actually, you found out that it's 90% science and 10% art. Science in our world is data and technology. So everything we're going to talk about today relies on that thought and the fact that it all, it, it's all about the data and the metrics. So how do we kill FOMO? We're going to talk about three exciting features that we have on our Supersonic today things to share with you. Um, so basically, marketability score, a clear score from one to five to give you an idea of a go, no go for your game. Exactly what we talked about in order to reduce that FOMO effect. Uh, level analytics to use to make sure that every iteration you make is on point. And the third thing is automatic user acquisition, automatic UA. We at Supersonic have the ability to release your game without any optimization. Uh, effort and release your game to the stores to make some money, some good profit out of it while you're working on your next hit. So let's start. How do we do that? How do we kill FOMO? I keep pressing on the wrong button. Okay. So we'll start with our uh, regular testing funnel. This is how it goes. We always start on Facebook. Facebook is still a good place to test your game and to look at Overall marketability is a good place to learn and filter games. So this would be our first line, Facebook. It is dynamic, so you want to make sure you're, you're looking at CPIs along the way. Some, some months will be higher, some lower. Uh, but basically, we're looking at anything under 50 cents. Under 50 cents will be good. Uh, 25 cents is very good, and obviously, so on and so forth. The next phase would be to have uh, a better picture of other networks, right? We've tested on Facebook, we got a good understanding, our game looks good, but what about the rest of the picture? So we're gonna test on TikTok and Iron Source. 
these two networks are very important in order to, in order to understand your potential. And basically, TikTok is the largest growing um, social network out there. Uh, we all know TikTok. Everything that's going viral is on TikTok. So you want to make sure that you have the understanding on TikTok. Probably 80% of the games won't make it well on TikTok. Probably it's something that you've noticed. But it's something that you need to know in order to move on and continue to the next phases. So you want to make sure that your game looks good on TikTok. If, if not, then you need to know it uh, in advance. This is something that will help you in scale. Anything under 30 cents will look good, 20 cents on a 10 cents. Again, TikTok CPIs are also dynamic, so you want to make sure that you're looking at the right place. And now that we have our picture, we've tested Facebook and TikTok, we have the social side of things, right? So we have an understanding of how our game will work on social networks. So is that it? No, right? You want to make sure you also know, uh, you give a projection on the SDK side. So until now, we didn't really have the ability to know how good we are on the SDK side. We know that SDK is a really, really big part of scale, and if not bigger than the social side. Um, it was very expensive to buy on SDK networks, but now we work with Iron Source in order to create a um, marketability tool. It's called Iron Source Marketability Tool. And to give studios the ability to know and project how their game will work on SDKs. So basically, what we're doing is we are running on the top hyper casual games uh, in order to project the marketability. And uh, we're giving it around 1,000 impressions for each game, for each source, for our app. And we're looking at IPM. IPM is installs per mil. So how many installs do I have on 1,000 impressions? On 1,000 impressions that I showed my, uh, my creative, uh, anything above 20 is good. 30 and higher would be very good. So this, this is how it looks like. And we're actually running on um, all of the top, top charts, um, which just is exactly how it works in scale. Um, this is a cheaper way to run it, and it takes between three and four days to get results versus regular user acquisition, which you're doing on SDKs, which takes weeks and weeks to understand the potential on every channel. So now that we have a clear understanding of the three networks, you feel more confident, confident right? <laughs> Uh, but not quite yet, because you want to understand how did these different networks, these different scores that we got so far on Facebook, TikTok, and Iron Source gives you a clear understanding. That's why we, uh, we created the marketability score. Marketability score, as I said, is a score from one to five that gives you a clear understanding. What happens if my CPI on TikTok is high, but my CPI on Facebook was good? So how do you correlate all of these different metrics into one number? This is how we do it. We combine the three scores on Facebook, TikTok, and Iron Source into one score with a certainty rate. So this is also something that gives you a better feeling in your stomach. Certainty rate will go up with the amount of videos, spend, the amount of networks you tested on. So if you test it only on Facebook and TikTok, then you want a certainty rate to go up with Iron Source. We also take under consideration the number of creatives you made for the test. So this is something that's really important to look at as well. Um, and besides CPI, you probably noticed that there are other important factors to look into when you're looking at marketability. So we want to look at the demographic distribution. We want to look at age. We want to look at everything um, that, that happens also on Facebook and TikTok. And this is something to take into consideration that comes into our score. And this is just a picture from our platform. So you can see here the marketability score and the certainty rate, very, very clear. Obviously, four, it's something to go with. as a strong title. And we know that we want to move forward with it. So let me give you a few, a few examples from our recent tests failures and successes. How do we use the marketability score in order to move on and to test with certainty? So this is a test, uh, a simulation decision-making game that we made with our partner, uh, Binnacle. You can see that we had a good score, a good CPI on Facebook. So maybe uh, our old we two years ago would uh, work on a game for months and months and probably wasted a lot of important time and effort. And we only realized that the game is not very scalable in other networks later on. So only in soft launch, maybe. But as you can see, we had a 50 cents on TikTok, which is not so great. And we had a very low IPM. We had a 5 IPM, which means only five users installed our game from 1,000 impressions, which gave us a combined score of two. Not very strong. 
Um, this is why we didn't continue with it, and we didn't waste any more time on it. So from V1 of the test, we didn't make any iterations, maybe like one creative one, to understand that these numbers actually make sense, and we dropped it. A uh, little nice story with the same developer, with the same um, studio we published first to life, which is again you probably know, uh, had strong marketability, actually the same CPI as our previous uh, prototype we looked at, but we continued testing. So we tested also on TikTok, which gave us a good understanding, 12 cent CPI, not bad at all. Uh, you can also understand why it works well on TikTok, a very viral game. And we got a 20 IPM in stores per mil. On, on our marketability test on iron source, which is not bad. This brought us to a combined score of four. High potential gave us certainty to continue working on the game, and we're very happy we did it, because the same with the same studio, if we continue working on the other game, that would be a no-go and a de big demotivator. So that's why um, this worked really, really well for us. Another example I had to give you um, is actually Color match, you all know the game. Uh, we got a five high potential. I, have to, I had to give a, a five score. I had to show a five score to you. So basically, Color Match had a green light all over, 10 cent CPI on Facebook, 13 uh, CPI on TikTok. Actually, the idea came from TikTok initially. So we projected it to be good on the social networks before we even tested it. But we didn't know its power on the SDK side. On the SDK, it got actually almost 30 IPM, which is really, really great gave us a five high potential score and the right push uh, to publish the game three months after. So exactly three months after V1 test, we published the game. Kudos to our great partners at Garrel. Very happy we did that. Not too shabby. This was published. So let's go back to our funnel. We talked about making sure that our marketability works, getting a good score. What happens after we get the good score? So until now, we've tested with about what? five to 10 creatives. We want to have more variation. We want to have more ad sets in order to test with. So our one, two successful videos won't get exhausted while we reach scale. How do we do that? Basically, here at Supersonic, uh, we make sure that we have enough videos. We're using our advanced technology from Luna Iron Source in order to create a lot of videos and interactive end cards, which is pretty cool. Um, we also have a creative dashboard, which in a way predicts when the creative will get exhausted, right? We use win rate, so that's the percentage of winning videos that we're using in order to predict how, how far the creative will go. And that's an amazing understanding you'll have because it's not enough to have good CPI or a good score. It's also um, very important to have enough videos to go to war with. So that's something we're taking care of. But even if you don't work with us, I really suggest making at least 60, 70 videos before you uh, go into war, before you go in and invest your time months and months over months uh, on developing a game. And this is um, something to look forward to. So we talked about creatives. We have our creatives. We have our marketability. We have uh, a good score to continue with. And now comes the heavy lifting, right? You're part of the, of the deal. Bring it on, develop the game, iterate on and on until you reach the good KPIs. How do we do that? So how do you, this is actually just a picture from our platform, um, our internal platform, actually. You can see the amazing, uh, this is Apapu. So uh, accumulated playtime, right? L like your lifetime playtime of an average user. We're looking at it um, over four iterations, around four or five iterations. You can see the 200, from 200 seconds to 500 seconds, which is almost an hour and a half. And it's a really nice picture, because actually you can see here, with every iteration, there was an uplift. With every iteration, there was something um, actually that uh, improve the game, which is this is what we want in our iteration. We don't want it to look like that. That's why we want it to look like only going up. So how do you do that? How do you make sure you touch the right panes of the game, the right points? How do you make sure that every iteration counts and actually you work in the right way? Um, using analytics, right? You need to optimize your level drops. Make sure that you don't have uh, too high drops. You want to look, this is actually a picture from our platform. You need to identify your drops. You can also compare between different builds to understand that, did I improve the um, level drop on this build or not? And between different cohorts. Next thing you want to do is also optimize the length of your levels. You want to make sure that 
it's ready for a healthy monetization. You don't want to make, you don't want to have two of a different um, level lane. So, oops. Here you can see the level lanes of, I don't know, level 13 to 15 is quite higher. Um, and, and this is not a good balance. You don't want to show too many mid-level interstitials if you don't have to. So you want to make sure it's pretty much balanced. Look into it. Probably soft launch would be too late because you already built the game and you already built how the level works and, and uh, uh, progression. Um, something that we don't talk about enough and not very sexy but needed to be said is crashes. Crashes happen, it happens to all of us. Sometimes we don't have quality builds and it's definitely something to look into specifically on Android because we have many, many different um, devices, right, playing on. So in our crash-free center, you can see the uh, percentage of crash-free sessions. You want to look into anything under 85 cents. Anything under 85 cents, something to look into, something to optimize. Um, again, soft launch, you, it's going to be too late. You're going to lose a lot of money. Your ARPU will go down. And yeah, that would be way, way, way too late. Um, it's something to look into. I have one minute. That's what, that's what I have. No, can be. Uh, cool. So we made a good game. Sometimes it happens. Uh, but m we don't have strong enough uh, metrics in order to continue moving on. We don't have strong enough metrics to say this would be the next big hit. You probably had games like that where the marketability is good, but the in-game is not quite there, or the opposite. So we had an OK marketability. In-game is, um, is, is amazing. Uh, what do we do with this type of game? At Supersonic, we have the ability to uh, launch your game with automatic user acquisition. So basically, it's the same integration process as any other uh, integration. Very, very easy and smooth on our side. It's minimum uh, investment on, in terms of optimization. So it's running on automatically optimization, optimizing every campaign according to geo, creative, um, ad set, and so on. But it gives us, it gives us as a team, and it gives you an opportunity to make some profits. I won't say on the side, but until you reach that hit, that next hit. So it helped all of our developers get some profits. Actually, um, expected profit is between $100,000 and $300,000 per title that's running on automatic UA. And this is a great way to get some juice in order to uh, push for the next one. So maybe your game can be profitable. Definitely consider that with your publisher. Three steps to killing FOMO. We talked about testing on all three channels to get a good understanding, a holistic view of your marketability power. Super important. Before you move on, before you invest a lot of time on your game, sweat and tears, um, look and monitor your level analytics. So super important to make sure that every iteration counts. Um, you don't want to make iterations and just another one, another one, another one, and nothing happens. Very important. Your time is crucial. Use analytics, use level drops, use the level length in order to learn about your game. And the third thing is you should consider automa automatically UAing your game if you see good metrics but, but not the best. So it's something to consider with your publisher. Yes, no more FOMO, right? right? You, feel the, you feel better. So thank you so much, guys. I had so much time fun with you. Come visit us at our booth. You can't miss us. Thanks.